In this episode, I'm going to show you my solution for fixing the wobbly fence on the Proxon Thermo Cutter. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Game Terrain Engineering. This episode is another one of my specific episodes. It's geared towards a very specific user or watcher, someone who owns the Proxon Thermocut, this thing right here. I released an episode a few weeks back where I showed you a small jig I used that slides along this fence and allows you to make you know straight cuts without having to move your hands or, or get your fingers near the hot wire. And I mentioned that I was also going to be trying to solve the problem of this wiggly fence. Now, let me show you real quick. Let me loosen this up. The fence uh, stays on this part right here. This allows you to dial an angle for it. And this channel, or this right here, this piece of metal, it fits in a channel that uh, allows you to slide the fence so that you can cut, uh, you know, slide a piece of foam along this edge and make a straight cut. The problem is, and maybe not every Proxon user has this problem, but my problem is this fence, it slides very easily on the uh, on this thing right here. Um, it's, it's kind of a pain when you're pushing a piece of foam through and this keeps sliding and comes off the track. So I, you know, took a look at this and tried to come up with a solution. I've, I've had a few prototypes that didn't work. Ultimately, it came down to this. Whatever I need to design, it needs to hold this and keep it from sliding. It also needs to allow me to continually move it left and right along this track uh, without having to, you know, remove whatever, you know, I design. So I want something that will keep it from moving, you know, this way, but not prevent me from moving it this way. So there are probably a lot of solutions for this. Uh, my solution is to always go out to Tinkercad, which is a computer-aided design piece of software. It's free, tinkercad.com, and I'll put it in the description below. Tinkercad is a CAD, uh, it's a CAD application that allows you to design 3D models of whatever you can come up with in your mind, and then you can output them into specific files so they can be 3D printed or cut with a laser cutter or cut with a CNC machine. And if those terms don't mean anything to you, don't worry about it. But, um, you know, the the idea is I, I do make a lot of handmade things, but one of the things that I don't do is I don't design tools uh, that need to have very specific measurements, uh, very, very, uh, may have very fine tolerances. And for something like this, I knew I needed, I knew, knew I was going to need to design something that had some very fine tolerances, mainly because in this fence, you can see this gap in here has a certain height and width. Uh, it doesn't change from one end to the other. Uh, that's a very specific tolerance for something that needs to fit in there, and I, which is one of the solutions I came up with. So let me show you real quick what I've come up with, and then I'm gonna show you how it works on the table. The solution is these two little plastic pieces right here. I printed them on my 3D printer. I'm going to show you that in a second. They were designed in a CAD application. Uh, they went through a number of beta tests. Hang on just a second. So I, I numbered them. Um, here's version one, version two, version three, version four, and then the final version. So it took five printings to get this working. Now, it's kind of hard to tell, but maybe you can see there's a difference. This one is longer than the very first one. This is the final version right here. You can't tell in the video very well, but trust me, it's about a it's about a millimeter, maybe even seven quarters of a millimeter wider than the original version. And in terms of its height, it's just uh, it's probably about uh, probably about a millimeter, eh, maybe a little bit more. I was working in inches. Um, so apologies, I can't do the math in my head right now, but suffice to say, uh, it only took me five iterations to get to the final solution, which may sound like a lot, but um, you know, in the old days, if you wanted to design something like this, you probably had to cut it out of wood or 
you know, something this small is kind of hard to weld. Maybe some of your welders out there could do it, but something like this would have to be cut out of wood. You'd test it. If it didn't work, you'd take, you'd go back to the drawing board and cut it again. The other solution was if you were an engineering firm or whatever, and you wanted something designed like this, you would design it, prototype it. Um, the prototype would have to be probably outsourced. You would come up with the dimensions you want. You'd send it off to a company that would maybe cut it out of metal or, or even maybe uh, mold it or something like that. They'd send it back to you. You'd test it. It would fail. You'd have to go through the whole process again. This could take weeks and months, maybe years, depending on the product you were developing. Lots of money. I mean, thousands and thousands of dollars in shipping fees and prototyping fees and things like that. I printed one of these in 30 minutes tested it, didn't work, made a slight tweak, printed it in 30 minutes, didn't work, tweak again, tweak again. What I ultimately ended up doing was increasing the height and the width by a 1 64th of an inch for each print. I eventually reached a point where it was too wide or too tall to insert into the hole here, so I backed it off a 64th of an inch. And that's where the secret comes in. I'm gonna show you my solution for getting that tight fit so these don't fall out. Because right now, if I stick them in, it looks like it's tight, and it does, but watch how easy it comes out. It just comes out too easy. So if you're moving something on this, uh, on this sled, there's a very good chance that the movement might wiggle this out. I need it to stay in there, and the solution is simple. So anyway, let me jump to the video showing you that these were being 3D printed. Total time to print both of oops, both of these uh, was 56 minutes. I'm gonna put a picture up here. 56 minutes, and that may sound like a long time, but I printed these at a very fine resolution. Originally, I was printing them out in what I call draft uh, printing. My, my 3D printer has different levels, which is the different quality of the print. The draft lets you quickly do it and check it and eyeball it. And as I started getting, you know, narrowing down the width and the height more specifically, I went from draft to nominal to ideal. I think that was it. Uh, improved it two times until I get this polished smooth. It's, it's, I mean, they're really smooth. I'll take some close-up photos and put these at the end of the episode. But, uh, you know, printed these out, took an hour, but they work. They're really cool. And so now I'm going to jump to the video of this 3D printing, and then I'm going to show you these working on the tabletop and how I insert them. All right, here is my Proxon table. Here is the fence. Here is this piece. I'm going to slide the fence on, and I just want you to see how easy. See how easy it slides on there? When you're taking a piece of foam and pushing it along this, sometimes the foam you know, may have an uneven surface and it will grab this and you'll find the sled or the fence moving with it like that. What I came up with is uh, something that needs to stop it from moving that direction and something that needs to stop it from moving this direction. And that is where these come in. You'll notice they look a little different and there's a reason for that. Now the way this works, this one will insert into the back here and this leg, let me show you, let me take it out again. This leg right here sits flush against the back side of the Proxon. Now watch what happens. See how it comes out? Easy it comes out? That's the solution where this other side comes in. This one slots into here, okay? Now, it's still loose because these aren't tight fitting, okay? But it is better. There's a, it, it, it takes a minute for me to wiggle them out. There we go. So, again, during my design process, I got this as close as I could to fitting in there. There's just a hair of a little bit of wiggle room, not much, but any my, my printer, because of the resolution of the print, the fine hair of plastic that it can, it can print, any thicker or any taller, and it just will not go in there. This is about as good a fit as I can do with that printer. So here is my solution. 
It's really, really simple and really, really dumb, but it works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of blue painter's tape, and I'm only going to wrap this one one time. I go here, over the top, down the bottom, and then over. And then what I'm gonna do is just trim it, okay? Now, that tape is very thin, but believe it or not, it's all it takes to give this a very tight fit. And it's not so tight that you can't pull it out later, okay? There we go, it's in there. And you can, you can. Um, I kind of should have tightened it a little better, but it's, it is in there, it's not coming out. I'm gonna do the same with this side. Okay, I'm just wrapping, wrapping it one time. And this was just through trial and error. Um, wrapping it twice, too thick. Wrapping it once, perfect. I'll trim it. Actually, I'm gonna trim that just a little bit more. There we go. All right, I will insert this one. Actually, what you wanna do is you gotta put it on first. Don't, <laughs> that was the one thing I learned, I forgot to do that. Put the fence on, pull it to where this back hits, okay? And then you'll notice these legs, they're long for a reason, because this thing extends beyond the front of the proxon here. So when you stick this one in and you push it in really good, you gotta push it in all the way. There we go. Okay. Now, the fence jiggles just a little bit, and the only reason for that is I really didn't do this one right. I should pull that out and fix it. But if you notice, the fence is locked, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna pull that out and I'm gonna redo that one. Now, the way I would tell you to fine tune this is wrap all four sides with a tape, okay? See, it comes out, it ruins the tape. When you pull it out, the tape is gone. But what you can do is wrap all four sides. If you find it's too tight, wrap three sides. If that's too tight, figure out if it's the top or the you know the top and bottom or the or the width that's that's uh, slowing you down, and only cover that side. I am going to just go over this three times now. Three sides. I'll do the t the side, the top and the side. I'm gonna trim this. And remember, what I'm going for here is a very tight, snug fit. So I will put this, let's see, put this in here like that. All right, that is tight. I'm gonna take this one, insert it in here. I'll push it in, there we go, much better. There we go, no movement, see that? You gotta push them in flush. I've designed them so that they need to go all the way in. And I'm gonna turn this sideways so you can see. I hope you can see that. The two legs are just barely touching the sides. What I may do is I may lower each one of those legs about an eighth of an inch, uh, because the top one, if you see, is, is it's touching this edge, but I want it fully flush against this front right here. So I think, yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move these arms uh, down one eighth of an inch and that'll, that'll be perfect. And if you look at the back, the back one right here, it's, it's flush. And the reason again for that is I needed to be able to lock it in this way, but have it be able to move this way. A very simple solution, easy to make. If you've got access to a 3D printer, print these as, uh, as, uh, with as high a quality as you can. If you don't have a 3D printer, I'll put some links below to some services that will be happy to 3D print them for you. These are printed in PLA, and again, took about 56 minutes total to print, but now I have my fence is locked in. And if you're wondering how hard it is to pull them, pull them out, again, you just take a pair of pliers, grab them, and tug, and it will come out. But when it comes out, the tape will have to be replaced. Got it? And that's it. These two little simple pieces of plastic I'm making the file available. Uh, there's a link below. I thought about adding some indentations where you could grab it with the pliers to pull it out easier. Didn't. It's, it's not that hard to get a pair of pliers and pull them out. 
feel free to take them, download them, print them, use them. If you modify them and they work better, or if you find some way to make them work better, let me know. Share them with any Proxon owner you uh, you know who has this uh, you know sliding fence issue. So anyway, um, what am I working on for the Proxon right now? I have uh, another fix. I'm not going to tell you what it is right now because it, it's not working. But I'm I'm determined I'm going to uh, I'm going to solve it. Uh, I should have another Proxon jig or something like this for you, maybe in a week or two, maybe a couple week, more weeks. And I'm working on some more Star Wars Legion terrain, something really cool I hope you like. And I've got some more terrain for my Dungeons & Dragons and uh, Frostgrave games, especially the Ghost Archipelago um, Island theme. Please, any comments, any questions, post them below. I'm happy to answer them. And I will see you in the next episode.